Hello everybody and welcome to the final episode of My Garage Roleplay. So yes, on today's episode we will be finishing up with the roleplay series. And this is the last time we will be leaving from my house as well. But as promised, all of the buildings will be uploaded to next mods after the series has completed. In other words, after this episode. So you will be pleased to know that all of my vehicles have sold and I've made quite a bit of money on those. Uh, fortunately, I was able to borrow Uncle Richard's uh, shop truck for today just to finalize all the stuff we need to get out of the shop after this episode. So that is uh, very nice of them. So yeah, we are pretty much just going to finish off the El Camino in our shop today and send it over to Cyclone. And then everything is pretty much sorted out. So we've got, I think, all of the parts we need for it. So yeah, let's make our way over to the shop and see if we can get this thing put back together. All right, so we are here at the shop for the last time in the series. And yeah, I actually got my suitcase in the back of the pickup truck here as well. So yeah, once we are ready to rock and roll, uh, I think Andy will be taking me to the airport where I'll be taking my flight out of town and then yes everything has been sorted out the shop has been sold so we need to actually just finish up this project and pretty much uh, get the shop empty for the new owner of the shop so i've got no idea what they're going to be doing here but yeah that is uh, probably something we will find out from uncle richie once they you know got settled in and everything but yes here we are we've got cyclones chevy El Camino in our garage so we need to pretty much just install a bunch of parts and button this thing up. So this might end up being a little bit of a longer episode, depending on how long it's going to take for me to get everything installed. We've got to do wheels and tires, interior. Uh, I think Tom did already put the headliner in for us. So that is done already. And he also replaced all of the window winders. So that is sorted out as well. And we also have got all of the chrome bits uh chevy parts that cyclone has requested all of the suspension parts i did go through those and ordered everything uh, we're a little bit uh, stuck in between this uh, table and the engine there but our engine has been finalized so i've got the fuel pump installed and everything is ready uh, we've got coolant for the new radiator as well as oil so yeah that is pretty much everything we still need to do for today uh, suspension work as well and then yeah, pretty much we are going to be tinting the windows as well. Uh, just the, the th yeah, basically the five windows on the cab because we're not going to be tinting the windshield, which would be a little bit weird. So that's what we are going to pretty much do for today. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start off by getting this thing sorted out on the interior. Uh, as for the old parts, that is why we've got the old shop truck over there. So we're going to pretty much just dump everything in there and get that sent over to the barn along with the old engine and all the suspension parts we're not going to be chucking uh, that'll pretty much go in the barn so yeah i think uh, let me start by stripping the interior bits we have on the car off and yeah pretty much just sort that out so we did decide together on the color white interior for this so this is pretty much going to go in the trash so i'm just going to pop it out there and yeah, we're going to slap on these new, brand new interior bits. Which I think is going to suit the car very nicely. Alright, so let's get our shifter removed here as well. Alright, we've got it. Yeah, this is actually not too bad of a part. So we'll put that on a pile for us to take to the barn. Uh, I think these wheels and tires will also go to the barn for the time being. I mean until we've decided what to do with our barn stuff but yeah i will be leaving uncle richie in charge of that because he's pretty much uh, just uh, handling all of the stuff that we leave behind all right so we've got two pretty decent seats in this thing still as well so that can pretty much go in the barn as well but yeah let's get our new driver seat fitted as well there we go yeah, I really think the white interior is going to suit this truck very nicely. It's going to give it a little bit of a contrast 
which we are aiming towards. Okay, so our passenger seat is coming out. And that's the thing about this truck. It's actually very simple changing out the interior because it's just the door panels and the seats and the gear shifter, then you are pretty much done. So yeah, that is the passenger seat pretty much installed. All right, so let's grab our door panel. And then I think we should be pretty much done with the interior on this thing. Uh, apart from the dash cluster so we still need to decide whether we are going to install a new one because the one on cyclone struck over here does work it's just the hazard switch doesn't work so we might have to replace this for him but i think what we'll do is we'll put that in the back of the bed for him and then he can decide whether he wants to install the new one or keep the original one that shows the actual mileage of the truck as well because we had, yeah, this cluster is still original with 291,715 kilometers on the odometer. So that reason I've decided not to just chuck it just yet. So yeah, let's uh, pretty much start with the next bit. So what I think is going to be the bodywork. So we'll get all the bumpers and the chrome and all that fitted. So I think let's start with these bits. Uh, we should be able to just snap these on. So this will pretty much transform this pickup truck. Uh, we also got brand new headlights and taillights for this and a tow hitch, which we are going to be putting on as well. And I also had these custom plates made for Cyclone because this is going to be a shop truck. So that is definitely going to look very nice. All right, let's get this bumper bolted down quickly. And that is sorted. All right, so next up, I think let's get our our Chevy grill installed as well. So you're going to need a screwdriver for that quickly. So we've also got the headlight trim to install. So, but I think we'll do the headlights first. Uh, these are the screws. So we might actually just take this off. It's going to make it a little bit easier to handle the headlights. So we'll put that down for a second. <clears throat> All right. So let's get these headlights mounted. So these are all brand new headlights with brand new bulbs as well. So everything is going to work very well on this truck. All right, so let's grab the next one over here. All right, and just like that, got our two headlights on the passenger side. Let's get the driver side ones installed as well. Right there and over there. Perfect. And we've got a last headlight and then our front end should be more or less sorted. Uh, can't think of anything at the moment we still need to do here, but we'll see whatever parts we have left. We need to sort out probably. Let's just slap our front end back on here. And there we have it. That is one complete front end looking very snazzy indeed. All right. So next up, let's uh, slap on the rear bumper. And then we'll do the rest of the parts at the back here, the taillights and such. All right, so there's a bolt and there's a bolt. And let's also be sure to mount his trailer hitch for him. So this will pretty much go over there. Just need to bolt it down. And that is perfect. All right, so now I think we can do the Daylights. So let's grab our screwdriver. So we've got just one screw on each of these. So this one is busted, so that can be chucked outside. And then the one on the driver side is still in fair condition, I would say. So we're going to send that to the barn. All right. And then, yeah, let's get our new ones fitted. This is a right daylight. And just like that, brand new taillight installed. And then we just need to install the driver side one or the left one. And there we go. All right, I think while we've got the hatch open, let's uh, quickly slide this in here for him as well. And that is 
pretty much sorted. So we did get all of the chrome trims and things installed already in Tom's workshop. So he did an amazing job on this paint job. It's definitely looking very good in this blue, original blue for the vehicle. So I'm just uh, glad we were able to keep that part of the, the authenticness of this vehicle. All right, so now, yeah, I almost forgot about these trims. So these actually go around the headlights. So we weren't actually done with this. So let's get these sorted. And we also have some hood pins, which are going to also install for him. Okay, so let's get these ones. Uh, there we go. And we also got the side chrome badges as well. So we'll also get those fitted. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, I know this isn't going to be a 454 cubic inch engine, but at least we've got something close. That's a 380. Although there are many engine sizes in between, I just think this adds a little bit more uniqueness to the vehicle and it suits it perfectly. All right, I think these hood pins... Yeah, we should be able to just uh, install these as well, like that. And let's grab the other one here. All right, just like that. All right, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip out the old radiator. We're going to put in the new one just to make sure that there's going to be no overheating issues at all. Uh, we've got a wrench over here, so let's grab this one. All right, so we probably still have a bit of coolant in this one, but that's fine. We're just going to replace it and top up with new coolant. So this one, yeah, it's really not in a bad condition at all, but I figured, well, let's just get a new one. All right, so there that one goes and in with the brand new one and also new brand, uh, brand new radiator hoses. So that is definitely going to be much more reliable. Uh, I did also get a new battery because the old battery in this truck was a little bit toast. All right, so now let's get our engine sorted out. So this engine is a little bit toast uh, and it's not running at the moment. So that is pretty much just going to be a parts engine for the time being. And I see these bolts are loose already on this side. I did remove the starter because obviously I fitted that to the other transmission. And we also got a fuel line. All right, so we've got our fuel line taken off as well. So we'll be replacing this with a new one. I think this one is still in fair condition, so we'll, we'll keep it down over here. And then I think our engine is, yeah, it's loose. So we'll just rip that out with the exhaust and everything fitted. So this is pretty much going to the barn as well. Just set that down over there. And then I believe we should be able to get the transmission out if we just jack it up on the one side. Because we definitely need to replace that transmission. It has definitely seen some better days. Alright, so we're going to just lift it up on the one side. Uh, should be able to reach the bolts we need to get to over here. All right, and we're going to have to play a little bit of a guessing game with these ones on the drive shaft because I can't really see them, but I think, yeah, I've got it. All right, perfect. All right, let's slide the old one out. And this is going to be junked, so we'll just throw that outside. So we don't have a lot of parts we're going to be actually just chucking out. And then we're going to install our brand new V8 engine. Which is definitely going to look very nice in this car. And we can be sure to tighten up all of these wires as well while we are at it. Alright. Let's go around the other side here. All right, and yeah, we've got the starter on the gearbox. So we'll sort that out once we get our transmission in now. So I think let's go ahead and do that. All right, there we have it. So let's just make sure 
we tighten all of these bolts as well. Okay. And there, and our starter wire. So yeah, I think that is pretty much sorted. So let me just come down here again and tighten up this transmission. Uh, this exhaust is a little bit in the way. All right. That is pretty much engine and transmission sorted. So the only thing left to do is pretty much the suspension now and the wheels and tires. And then we should be able to get this thing fired up and see if it runs after we did the, the coolant and everything. So I think what we're going to do now is pretty much um, just jack it up on the other side where we need to work on. Because this is the side where the most worn parts are. And we can also get the wheels and tires pretty much sorted out while we are doing this. So we're going to pretty much grab our wrench again. Uh, I actually almost forgot about the fuel line. So let's maybe get that sorted out as well. While I'm having a look at it now. Alright, so this goes pretty much over here to our fuel pump. All right, so that is installed. Let's just double check on our gas tank here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's start with uh, this corner over here, which I know has got a bunch of worn parts. All right, so these wheels will also go into the barn. And we've got some worn brakes as well on this thing, which I didn't order. So, yeah, looks like I'm going to run next door. So, luckily, this guy's got a bunch of stock of parts for the Al Camino because we obviously owned one as well. So, we can just go around and pretty much pick those up. So, yeah, it shouldn't be a bit of a problem for us. So, I think while we are at it, we're going to check what else we still need here. Though the brake pads look pretty decent, I think we might as well just pick up some brake pads for all the corners. Uh, we've got new brake lines as well. So I was thinking of just replacing those. Oh, we've got... I forgot. We did get the brake pad. So that is good. We're just going to need some calipers. So I will go and pick up maybe four new ones of those as well. But we are definitely going to replace this upper control arm. That is looking pretty bad. That's actually... Uh, yeah, it looks like it was uh, bent in the accident. Because if you guys remember, this truck was in a bit of a accident there was nearly each and every panel on this thing was busted so yeah that's uh actually very strange we didn't find more damaged parts on this thing but yes there we have it so is that also a worn wheel hub so yeah i think we might as well just go ahead and replace this as well all right let's slap that down over there but I do want to have a look at this brake rotor while we are at it as well. See if we need to get new ones of these. Now, this specific one doesn't look too bad, so that should be fine. All right, and next up we've got our steering link and tie rod over here, which needs to come out. So this is looking pretty bent as well. Yeah, that was uh, definitely not going to give us proper wheel alignment anyway so let's get that removed and then i think in order to get the steering link out we need to remove this tie rod as well so we'll just go ahead and unbolt it over here uh, we should be fine to put it down over here for now and then on this side just get that removed all right put it down over here so those are all junk parts so luckily i did remember to order this one so that is gonna be brand new on this truck all right perfect and let's bolt this one back and then this tie rod is practically still brand new so that is going back in and looks like we've got good hub on this side we might need a disc brake for this side so that one looks a little bit thinner than the other one but let's continue quickly with our tie rod over here this one actually came off our donor vehicle so 
it's still in fair condition as well should get some decent mileage out of that tire rod as well uh, in terms of strut rods they look pretty good we do have new torsion bars uh, which cyclone did ask me for some lowered ones so those are on the shelf over here but we need to first of all remove the old ones so let's just get down under here quick and we'll do it one side at a time so we'll get this one taken off this one can actually go on our pile of parts for the barn so we might get some use out of that or somebody else might get some use out of that again all right and we're gonna slap in this new lowered torsion bar yeah i think that's gonna give it a nice slammed look definitely all right let me quickly run next door and get the new brake disc uh, caliper and a hub for the front quickly for this corner and we can button this one up and then we'll we'll see what else we need for the other side i, I know we've got a brake disc we need so might as well grab one of those as well quickly all righty so we've got our parts over here on the table now uh so i did decide to just replace all of the brake rotors so i've got four brand new ones and also we've got two new hubs and then all four the new calipers so I think that should pretty much sort this out then. Uh, so we'll see if we need to replace the rear hubs. Because obviously we can't really tell at the moment. So that is something we'll figure out once we get to that. Because yeah, luckily the guys got stock of everything we need. So I think let's button up this corner first. So I'm going to grab the new hub we've got over here. And I will get a brake disc. And then we'll put our new brake pads in. And then we'll get our wheel fitted. So yeah, this is pretty much uh, just the uh, running up and down a bit. But at least we know everything is going to be sorted. I might as well actually just take the whole toolbox over here. Let's get that put down. All right. And then that can go back in there. All right. So uh, let me grab the brake pads and the hoses. Uh, let's just uh, pick up everything over here and we'll work over on that table quickly and sort all of these things out. All right, so we need our front brake pads, first of all, uh, these ones. All right, and then let's get these mounted to the calipers. All right. Here we go, that one is in. Let's get this one sorted as well. All right, let's get our front left brake caliper installed. Okay, and there we go, that is tightened up. Let's get ourselves a brake hose over here. And then we will quickly mount a tire and get the tire fitted on the car or the wheel fitted on the car all right so we've got these beautiful 17 inch work rims which is going to go on this truck so this was also discussed with cyclone so he said it's fine we can slap these on the truck and i just decided to make it this orange color because it's going to match his uh logos writing over there so i think that is looking pretty decent yeah, we just need to air up the tires and then that'll be sorted. So, yeah, let's continue with this side while it's jacked up. So, there's another wheel going to the barn as well. And we'll get our old brake caliper removed over here. And we're also going to be replacing the uh, leaf springs, obviously, with the lowered ones. All right, let's just put this over there as well. Oh, this hub looks very good, actually. All right, so let's get this leaf spring removed. See, there was a, a bolt loose on this thing. All right, so this one is pretty much junk, so that can be tossed out. Okay, so let's grab our new one over here. And there we have it. All right bolt this down and that is looking very decent 
Very nice. All right, so let's get our brake disc replaced. We've got a new one over here. I think the old one isn't too bad, but we'll just swap it out so that we've got reliable brakes all around on this truck. Okay, there we have it. Yeah, this one is still fairly good, but we'll just slap a new one on while we are busy with this corner. And now let's quickly sort out our brake pads for the rear. Let's get all of these mounted. All right, that is looking good. And then let's do the other one also while we are here. Uh, actually, need to take this with me. Uh, let's grab our wrench again. I think we do have a wrench here anyway. All right, so let's go there bolt that down and then we're gonna get a brand new brake hose obviously all right let's make sure that is tightened down I uh, just wanted to check the brake master cylinder that looks pretty fresh and this bolt is tied down let's just uh, double check on that and let's double check on pretty much everything down here Yeah, that looks pretty much sorted. All right. I think next up we're going to pretty much do another wheel. So then I think this side of the truck is pretty much done. All right, there we have it. Okay, let's get this mounted as well. That is looking very sweet. Absolutely. All right, let's get this thing lowered down as well. And I think while I'm this side, let's just grab the air pump and air these tires up real quick. so there we've got it that is pretty much how low this thing is going to be sitting uh he might have to uh just check if it's going to be fine with these low exhaust pipes but we will also do a little bit of a test drive and see maybe we are going to have to replace the tires with high profile tires but that's going to definitely impact the look of the vehicle so it all depends if everything is going to be yeah not uh dragging on the ground Right, so over on this corner, we're just going to service the brakes. We do have a bad brake hose on this side, so that's pretty good that we are doing everything. Uh, once again, this caliper doesn't look too bad, so we'll, we'll probably pop that in the shed as well, or in the barn. All right, and let's go and grab our new brake disc over here. So this one is definitely a little bit worn. You can tell how thin it is. All right, let's just put that down there for now. Uh, all right, screwdriver. There we go. All right, let's get this taken off. So yeah, this is going to go directly into the trash pile. Because that is super thin. All right, let's get the new one installed here. And then we can... Pretty much do the, the hub first, I guess, because that is definitely something new we bought. So, although this one is still good, we will just uh, add it to the part for the barn. Uh, there we have the last hub for this side. Okay, let's get that installed quickly. All right, let's get our brake disc installed. Zip that down. Right, let's grab our caliper over here. Right, this is the front right caliper, so that can go in. And then, just be sure to tighten these bolts. Perfect, all right. Let's get our brake hose quickly. All right. 
right. There we go. Perfect. All right, so let's get a wheel mounted. Let's get the tire fitted first. All right, there we go. All right, so that is pretty much three down and one to go. All right, great stuff. Let's tackle this last corner quickly. And then we will do the final touches and see what else we still need to figure out. But I think we need to do our front shock quickly, or torsion bar, actually, uh, before I forget about it. Because that is going to look odd if we lower this thing down and this side is a little bit higher. Uh, so this is a good part. We can probably just put it down there for now. All right, let's grab our new one over here. And slap it in quickly. All right, there we have it. So that is sorted as well. All right now, where's my other wrench? Oh, there it is. Okay, perfect. All right, see, this one also has got a bad brake hose, so we'll just take this off as well. Yeah, we've got one good brake pad in this thing, so it's a good thing we are changing everything. All right, so we are going to need the brake disc, obviously. Uh, so let's quickly get that brake disc removed, which it doesn't look bad once again. So we only had the, the one that was super thin. And just double check on these. Yeah, this is the correct one. Let's just put this one on. This is our old one, which is worn. All right, let's put that down over there. All right, let's go grab our last brake caliper over here. And we've got a brake hose as well. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit this to the caliper beforehand because yeah, it's very difficult to do when it's not mounted to the vehicle. But yeah, there we go. All right, now we'll be able to get this fitted as well. Our brake pads are in. Okay, let's zip this down. And then it's just our last shock absorber over here, or our leaf spring, actually, of the shock absorber. It did look like this truck was actually very well maintained uh, before it got into the accident. All right, let's set that down over there. And then the final piece of the puzzle is pretty much this leaf spring on this corner and that will pretty much be the suspension apart from one wheel missing then this truck is getting very close to completion all right so let's grab this last wheel get our last tire fitted as well all righty and here we go let's get this installed All right, so this can pretty much go on the bench on our table over there. All right, let's just have a look. We've got the window tint over there, and we've got our coolant and oil. And then these two wheels can pretty much go over here. So I will be loading everything into the F100 and taking it over to the barn. Just going to make it a little bit less effort for us, moving up and down the whole time. All right, so let's lower this down. Get this out of the way so in terms of all the tools in the shop i think uncle richie will pretty much sort it out for us and get everything you know going in the right direction into people's hands that are going to be using it because obviously i'm not going to be taking anything with me all right so let's just make sure we've got the right pressure in this tire and let's air up this last one quickly All right, let's go. There we go. All right, that's perfect. All right, well, there she is. It's definitely a uh, very good looking Chevy El Camino now. So we just pretty much need to do fluids and maybe let's quickly slap on the window tint. 
So this roll should be enough for all the windows I need to do on this. So let's just uh, get that put on. And there we go. So this can go straight to the trash outside over here, which we'll sort out in a bit. Alrighty, so I think it's just a, a matter of getting the fluids sorted and then we're going to see if this thing fires up. Now, I'm pretty sure and confident that I've did, done everything correctly. Let's just double check. Yeah, we've got no oil in here. And what I'm going to do is let's uh, put everything into our backpack over here. We'll carry it over. And we'll just... Uh, Pop it down close by so that we can easily reach it. Okay, so let's start with our first bottle of oil. Once again, we know it takes three bottles, so let's get all of this topped up. And then, yeah, I think I'm going to bring you guys back up to speed once all of the coolant and fluids are in. Right, so we've got our fluids all topped off now and I believe we should be ready to fire this thing up now uh, let's just be sure to move all of these uh, bottles out of the way so I'm gonna just pick this up uh, this bottle is pretty much half so we'll just chuck it as well there's really no use in keeping it around at all so yeah it's just gonna be chucked out with the rest but yes this is going to be moment of truth to see if the engine I built is going to fire up. Alright, so let's keep our fingers crossed. And there we go. That is the sound of a very fresh 380 cubic inch V8. And now, once and for all, close the hood. I think this thing is ready to hit the road. So what I'm going to do is we're going to just see if it moves around brakes work yes they do and we've got quite a bit of power now in this engine as well so I'm pretty sure Cyclone is going to be very happy with his new shop truck so yes this is uh, pretty much ready for shipping I mean this thing turned out very nice there's uh, definitely going to be some bumps that's going to be hampering with that exhaust system we might actually have to get a uh, standard exhaust for this truck um, well both sides but I think that is something that we can figure out for him maybe off camera uh, before we uh, head off on our journey so yeah we are gonna pretty much just sort out a bunch of things off camera now in this series but I think that is pretty much going to be the wrap for the last episode of the My Garage roleplay series so do stick around guys because we've got a brand new series starting soon called My Garage Revivals where yeah we are going to be pretty much starting from scratch again uh, very little money and also we're going to have to work, work our way up and see how we're going to be able to make money because money is going to be a very important aspect in that series and also we are going to try and see how we are going to climb the ladder and what things we are going to do but it's going to be a lot more involved with the discord community so if you guys haven't joined the discord yet uh, there is a link down in the description of this video and also if you haven't watched the complete my garage roleplay series there is also a link down below the video for the full playlist of this series so do go and check that out from episode one and yes that is a uh, pretty much a milestone for us we've uh, pretty much made 53 episodes of this season or this series and I think that was uh, 
definitely something that I never thought was going to be possible. But we did it, and I'm actually very glad. So I did learn a lot of skills during this series, and I also managed to get my 1,000 subscribers during this series. So I want to thank each and everybody who has subscribed to my channel thus far. And I also want to ask if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I will appreciate it very much. But yes, guys, until the next series, cheerio.